going? Good. Excellent. Uh, my name is Charlie, and I'm with uh, with Mold Busters today. And uh, what we're going to do this morning is take our current understanding of a common problem that I'm sure all you guys encounter on a regular, daily basis. We're going to take our current understanding of mold and its symptoms, and we're going to enlighten it. We're going to just kind of expand on it and get some further instruction into it. So how many people in the room here have encountered mold uh, you know, in their day-to-day -day jobs? Right? Now, what is the biggest complaint about mold that you guys, uh, that you guys get? Health issues. Does anyone else uh, concur with that, health issues? What do we know that mold causes in terms of health issues? Respiratory issues? Sometimes even life threatening, right? If you get to that point. And uh, the reason that we want to really emphasize today on what mold is all about is because bottom line is that it can become life threatening. And uh, we want to definitely um, clear out any misconceptions there are about mold and get right to the root cause of it. So a lot of this stuff that we're going to learn today is going to be really technical, but you know, bear with me, I'm going to try to make it as fun as possible. If you guys were biology students and loved it, then you're going to love this particular presentation. So we're going to get right into it. What is mold? So mold, first of all, is a, is a fungi. Now I'm going to say fungi, but it's properly pronounced fungi. It just sounds weird and ridiculous, so I'm just going to keep going on with fungi. So mold is a, uh, is a fungi, and um, it is very, very pervasive, meaning that it multiplies itself and it, uh, it, it spreads really quickly. Now the other thing with mold is that it's one of the, the, the number one degraders of cellulose on the planet. Um, so basically what that means is that it's one of the biggest uh, kind of the generators of substance and materials there, there are. And one of the reasons, and we're going to look at this a little bit more in depth later on, is that it embeds itself directly into the fabric of materials such as wood, drywall, and, and other things like fruit and, and, and all the rest of it. And uh, sometimes getting rid of the mold on the surface is not just enough, because it's embedded directly into the materials, which is why removal of the materials is essential in order to remove mold. Mold is very, very complex. And uh, I'm going to just take a little bit of time to explain mold uh, and its complexity very simply. Can I borrow this? All right, awesome. So basically, what we're going to look at is this. This is, um, we're going to use an example of a tree. So this would be the soil, right? And then the tree would be <coughs> this bottle of water. And then this would be the trunk of the tree. The rest of this would be the, you know, the kind of leaves and foliage and fruits and whatnot growing off the tree. Now what's beneath the surface of the soil? Fruits, right? Now this is, this is where uh, mold is, uh, is complex. Where at the very surface is the trunk and, uh, and the foliage, beneath is the roots. The roots is what gives it that, uh, that longevity, that problematic uh, you know, kind of quality that it has. Basically, when uh, we remove, or when mold is removed, underneath the soil, the roots still remain intact, which is why you need to remove the entirety of the material. Basically, thank you, the roots underneath is what generates all of its kind of nutrients. It sucks the life right out of it. And um, the roots itself, or the trunk of the tree, is, uh, is pretty much what um, the, the mold kind of grows out of. And then the foliage itself is what's called spores. Has anyone ever encountered that word before, mold spores? Now the really interesting thing about mold spores is that they germinate. They, they are reproductive systems. So when the spores of mold kind of go and, they're, and they fly out and they're airborne and they're going all over the place, they have a few missions in mind. One of them is to reproduce. Now the interesting thing, and now one of the interesting things about mold spores is that they have a really hard outer layer. And you'll notice something, that if people who are allergic to mold, they will also likely be allergic to shellfish. Because one of the outer cellular uh, constructs of mold spores is something called chitin, which is the same uh, molecular construct used in the outer shell of a lobster. So which is kind of interesting, you'll find people who are allergic to mold are also allergic to shellfish. So what we see is that these, the mold is very 
intricately designed, and it's very difficult to kind of get rid of. Mold is extremely allergenic, which is why I know a lot of people uh, experience problems with uh, you know, respiratory issues and problems uh, re related to mold because it's, it's highly allergenic. It can lead to major structural damage. And you guys have seen that in your own work, am I correct? Right, that mold will corrode the inside out of an entire establishment. So we see that that mold is, is more than what you meet the eye, which is why mold inspectors in particular specializes in inspecting and deciphering what type of mold it really is. Because not everything that we encounter is mold, right? And we need to be sure beforehand that we test all molds for a number of reasons. One, so that we determine that it's not a just discolored building material. Two, that we, that we determine what type of mold it really is, whether it's you know, something that uh, can be lethal, deadly, what type of strain of mold it is, which is why uh, inspecting and determining and testing the quality of the air and, and testing the mold itself is very important, because we need to know how to be able to handle it. Keep in mind that mold is a biological contaminant, and it needs to be handled like such. So there are three major conditions that are necessary for mold to grow. One is a food source, like drywall, wood, etc. Temperature. So the higher the humidity, the best uh, quality uh, is produced for mold to survive, duplicate, and, and thrive. And the next major one is, is water, moisture. Without, without, like, wherever there is moisture problems or water issues in the house, there you will find mold. Right? One of the major slogans is that, you know, mold is a symptom, and the problem really is water. And the solution, of course, is, is mold busters. So, the neat thing about mold spores is that they're so small that they're virtually invisible to the naked eye. Uh, they're very light. They can move through the air quickly, so sometimes it just takes a person walking through an area that's contaminated with mold to kind of break up the mold spores and then the spores can be carried onto the person and then carried into the next room. Which is why if you have mold in one section of the house, chances are you'll have it in another section of the house because the spores themselves are easily transferable from room to room. They're airborne, they're light, and the spores themselves, they are the Let's just face it, they're the sperm of mold, so they will reproduce themselves all over the place. And all it takes, and they, they self-reproduce, it takes just a little bit of moisture. Mold spores also produce toxins, and, and, and these toxins is what cause health problems, cause other, uh, other aggravating factors. And we're going to look later on at what type or what mold spores actually kind of do to people because of their toxicity. Uh, one of them is that, uh, you know, from skin contact of someone who is sensitive or allergic to mold is that they'll develop really nasty skin blisters and rashes. Has anyone ever seen that in their encounters in homes, uh, people who are uh, infected as a result of mold? It's very nasty stuff. If you guys are bored and have some time, go on the internet, go through Google Images, you'll find some really colorful results. Uh, another really uh, dangerous thing is that if the mold spores get inside of your system, it causes systemic attacks. And so you'll start to, people in that stage will develop liver failure, organ issues. It can really become dangerous, which is why, again, that every time you encounter discolored building material, it needs to be analyzed and tested because you don't know what you're coming up against. And one square foot. Can someone measure up a square foot for me? Really quickly. There, everyone's pretty everyone's got about the same measurement. There we go. Oh, there we Alright, so <laughs> one square foot of moldy, moldy drywall, you'll have about one billion mold spores. Right? So if you encounter a wall this size with uh, that's all moldy, what you have is a potential breeding ground for disaster. You guys hear what I'm saying? It can be really, really disgusting. Um, as you guys probably know, you know, we find mold in a number of different areas, but in homes in particular, you'll, you'll primarily find mold growing from inside the walls. Now, now why do you guys think that is? 
let's just say there's a there's a, a leaky pipe inside of a wall. What does that create? That creates unnecessary moisture. Am I correct? Right. And then walls. Uh, and I, correct. I'm not. A, I'm not a builder of any kind. I couldn't nail two pieces of wood together. You know, my life depended on it. But you know, inside walls you have insulation, right? If it's exterior. If it's exterior walls, right? And so basically you have a concentrated a concentration of humidity. Plus you have the heat from the inside of the house. So what you have inside of a wall is pretty much prime breeding ground. You have moisture, you have humidity, you have enclosed area, and you have zero light, right? Fungi thrives on darkness. They're just like mushrooms, they grow in the dark. Uh, and, and keep in mind that mold is also a fungi, so it will, uh, it will grow there. And the other thing for mold is it grows under carpets, it grows uh, you know, in the attics uh, as well. So I mean, anywhere that there's high levels of humidity, <clears throat> potential for moisture, Low light uh, is where you'll find uh, a, a good pool for mold. We'll also find mold commonly in things like furniture, in food, and so on and so forth. Why is mold a problem? Two main reasons. One, structural damage. Right? So, like we said, that mold actually kind of embeds itself directly into the fabric of materials. It, it's a corrosive. Right, so the roots, like we were describing underneath the tree, that is tearing away at all the nutrients of the material itself. So it's slowly rotting it from the inside out. And once it, it sucks up as much nutrients as possible, what, what it tries to do then is try to spread out even more, to, to suck up more. So it really kind of rots things from the inside out. And as a result, it could cost a lot of money. Let's face it, right? It costs a lot of money to repair some structural damage as a result of mold, and it takes a lot of time because you have to ensure that in every area of the house that mold is removed. Because you don't want, as we know, that mold is so easily replicated, and you want to be able to remove every ounce of it so that you don't create a further problem down the line. Health problems are, is the other major concern. Especially with people who uh, are sensitive, who are allergic to mold. So again, maybe per perhaps people who are allergic, allergic to shellfish. And the elderly, and people who uh, are going through cancer or chemotherapy. Those are all people whose uh, immune systems are weak, immune systems are low, and they're more susceptible to, uh, to infection. So mold can create some really disastrous health consequences. Which is why we really need to take, uh, take proper measures about it. Okay, so if anyone here has a grow up, I would suggest that you just kind of uh, keep it on the DL. But marijuana grow ups in particular uh, are huge breeding pools for, for mold. Now, why do you guys think that is? High humidity. High humidity, exactly. What else? High temperature. High temperature, high humidity. Food source. Food source, all of those things, right? Has anyone here ever inspected a home after or were prior to it was, uh, was a grow up? Nasty stuff, right, guys? Yeah. It, it could be really, correct me if I'm wrong, really like disastrous. 